David Smith here with one more Flip Classroom math video. Three tips before we start. Remember, you can pause the video at any time to catch up with your notes. You can also turn on the caption down below and watch my words go by on your screen. Lastly, if you feel like you can do this, you can speed up the playback and get through the video a little bit faster. For a noise. Today's lesson covers a new and interesting topic Voronoi diagrams, or in the French, Voronoi diagrams. Okay, so I have an example diagram here. It's like the one in your book, so you can look at that too. And then I have a little description. I'm going to go ahead and read this off to you, and then we'll do kind of a user-friendly description. So, a Voronoi diagram is a diagram that shows points in regions. So, that's a region, that's a region, that's a region. Shows points in regions such that each region contains the points that are closer to a central point than any other central point. So let me break that down. What it means is that all the points in this region are closer to two than any other point on the diagram. All the points in this region are closer to one than any other of these central points in the diagram. Same thing with three. All the points in here are closer to that central point, everything in this region, than they are to any of the other central points. Wow, okay, so kind of interesting. What's it for? Check this out. This could be hospitals. Like each of these are hospitals, and this diagram, this map, would be really useful for people who needed to know how to get to the closest hospital. So if you lived here, you would know it's that hospital. If you lived right here, you would know it was hospital four. If you lived right here, you would know it was two, and so on. So that's one of the uses of these types of diagrams. Now, it's gonna take a little bit of manipulation and playing around to get used to these, and then the process for creating them is a little bit complicated. So I'm gonna go through that with you, and hopefully at the end of that, it's gonna make sense. Now let's do some vocabulary. There's four key words here that we'll use when we discuss Voronoi diagrams. Voronoi diagrams. Cells contain all points closest to their central point. So this would be a cell right here. This irregular, what is that? That's a quadrilateral. This polygon would also be called a cell, like that. So this diagram has five cells. Now let's get a little bit more specific. Central points actually have a name, they're called sites. So that's a site, that's a site, and we have three more in this diagram. Okay, so that was the second vocab. Lines separating regions are called boundaries or edges. So that would be like perhaps that boundary or that boundary. Those are boundaries or edges. And then lastly, edges meet at little corners called vertices. So that's a vertice, and that's a vertice. And all of these components are going to come into play when we discuss Voronoi, diag Voronoi diagrams. Now comes the fun part. We're going to make our own Voronoi diagram. So here's what I've got started here. Here's a graph. This represents like a city. This is like the grid view of a city. And we have three hospitals, A, B, and C, A, B, and C. And we need to construct a Voronoi diagram so that we know which regions are closest to each hospital. So say someone's living right there, which hospital should they drive to in an emergency? So let's get started. Now remember, this is a complicated process of steps. At the end, I'll summarize so you have your little cookbook for how to do these. Our text calls this process an incremental algorithm. And so incremental means kind of step by step by step by step. And an algorithm is a routine or a process that you can run as many times as you need. So the incremental algorithm, just as a fancy way of saying, here's the steps to do this. Okay, step one, find the midpoints of, I didn't write that correctly. You can't, you can't have a midpoint of a point. So it's of all the segments of A, B, A, C, and B, C. So now you have your points there. You know what they are. You can read them right off the graph. Go ahead and pause the video and find all those midpoints. 
All right, let's see how you did. I'm not showing the math. We know how to do midpoint calculations, so you should be sure you can do that. If you can't, come harass me and extra help and we'll get you going. So the midpoint of segment AB is 1, 2. The midpoint of segment BC is 2.5, 1.5. And finally, the midpoint of segment AC is 2.5, 3.5. Now, I'm not putting it on the diagram yet because this diagram will get confusing fast, but we'll get there. All right, next step in our incremental algorithm is find the slopes of these same segments, A, B, A, C, and B, C, right there. So go ahead and pause the video and work up that math. All right, let's see how you did. Here are my slopes. A, B is undefined. A, B is a vertical line, so it has an undefined slope. A, C is minus one-third and BC is a slope of 1. Okay, so there are your three slopes. Here's your next step. Find the negative reciprocals of those slopes. Pause the video and do that. Let's see how you did. The negative reciprocal of slope AB is 0. A vertical line has an undefined slope. A horizontal line has a slope of 0. Remember, and this is where we're going, that the negative reciprocals are slopes of lines that are perpendicular to these lines. The negative reciprocal for AC is 3, because we flip the fraction, change the sign, that makes that to 3. Now, 1 is kind of interesting. 1 is 1 over 1, so if you take the reciprocal of that, that's still 1 over 1, change the sign, it's negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. The next step is to use this information that we just distilled to draw perpendicular bisectors of AB, AC, and BC. And I know we're piling a lot of steps on here with no real result, but it's going to come together on the next board. Let's continue with step four in our incremental algorithm. So I summarized what we learned in steps one through three. Namely, segment AB has a midpoint of one, two, and the segment or, and its perpendicular slope would be zero. Segment AC has a midpoint of 2.5, 3.5, with the slope of a line perpendicular to that being three and so on for BC, 2.5, 1.5, and that perpendicular slope is negative 1. So now what we want to do is we want to draw the perpendicular bisectors of these three segments. So that's why we found these three series of information. To do the perpendicular bisector, it has to go through the midpoint of the segment, and the slope has to be perpendicular to the segment. So I'm going to go ahead and dash those in. So I'll do it for the first one, then I'm going to let you guys do the second two. So segment AB's perpendicular bisector goes through the midpoint, 1, 2. So I go up 1, 2. So it goes right through that. And then it has a slope of 0. So it's a line with a 0 slope is horizontal. So that slope is going to go right like this. So that is the perpendicular bisector of AB. And if I drew this segment, I could write a 90 degree angle right there. I'm not going to do it because it makes our drawing complicated. So there's the first perpendicular bisector of AB. Now what I want you to do is pause the video and do that for segment AC and for BC. You have all the information you need right there. You just use the midpoint and then you use the slope. Okay, let's see how you did. I'm going to do AC. Okay, so the midpoint of AC is 2.5, 3.5. So 2.5... 3.5 is right about there. And that looks good on my hand graph. It is looking like it's right on the midpoint. And now we need to draw a line that has a slope of 3. So what's going to happen is we're going to go up 3 and over 1. So we're at 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5. Tell you what, let's erase this. That's from, oh, well, that's from this one. Okay, so let's start again. We're going to go up 3.5, 4.5, 5.5. 6.5, that's up 3, and then over 1, somewhere like that. And so our perpendicular bisector is going to go through these two points. So let's dash that one in. Something like that. And then the last one, BC, the midpoint is 2.5, 1.5. So 2.5, 1.5, that's right about there. And that looks good. That's about halfway between these two and on the line that connects them. And now our slope on this one is negative 1. So that means we just go down 1 over 1. And that 2.5 is really right about there. So down 1 is to 1.5, over 1 is to 3.5. So we're going to do about like that. 
So this line goes through these two points. Okay, now that doesn't yet look like a Voronoi diagram. So what I want you to do now, I'm going to pause the video and see if you can figure out what the next step is going to be to create our Voronoi diagram. I added the step there for your notes. So check this out. Let's just take a look at A. Does this line make much sense for A? I don't think so. A, because this lot, the points in here are going to be closer to A than to B or C also. So I'm going to think that maybe this line and this line are the good ones. So I can erase these. Right? Now that looks more like a Voronoi for with A being the boundary there. Let's take a look at C. This line doesn't make much sense for C, so I'm going to get rid of that one. And now these lines separate for C, and then finally this one doesn't make much sense for B, so I can get rid of that. And then I can connect them up. So let's just get rid of the dashes and go straight across. Okay. So there's our completed Voronoi diagram, and yeah, uh, three points is not too bad. Wait till you try four or five. It gets kind of complicated. You're going to just have to keep track of all of your lines and your perpendicular bisectors, and then do a good job of erasing and accentuating the lines. So as I promised, I want to summarize that process with a step-by-step -step method that leaves out all the math and just puts it all into one place. This is probably pretty good for your notes. So to create a Voronoi diagram, First thing you do is you find the midpoints of the segments that connect the sites. Second thing you do, find the slopes of those segments. Third thing you do, find the negative reciprocals of the above slopes. And then the fourth thing is draw the perpendicular bisectors of those segments. And then finally erase, then fill in the correct boundaries to create your Voronoi diagram. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment to write down any remaining questions so you can bring them to our next class. Also remember that you can watch the video again to remind yourself of what we did or deepen your understanding. If you enjoyed yourself, please click like or subscribe.